Spawn on Me is the premier podcast spotlighting people of color. Every week, we talk new, what we've been playing, and tell you who's invited to the cookout. Our show is all about talking about gaming through a prism of blackness, because we are the culture. Welcome to Bukaka, y'all. Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is the Spawn of Me podcast with Khalif Adams. I'm your host, Khalif Adams. I hope you are doing well. I hope everybody is chilling. I hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday evening. I hope you are social distancing. I hope you're wearing your mask. I hope you're washing your hands, washing your butt, making sure that you are making sure that you are clean and not out here like a celebrity who doesn't wash their booty for a whole week. I'm not going to get into that conversation because that is a whole other thing to discuss that we are not going to get into this episode but i am very excited to see everybody here in podcast land everybody here in twitch land uh, who has come through again for another episode of our show if you missed last week's episode you missed our breakthrough episode 400 we hit the mark we hit episode 400 this week 401 because that's the way numbers work and that's because math is good I know how that works. Puss gums in the chat saying, Kyle, after last week on Twitter, we can't get into another washing discuss- discourse again. Reasonable. That's a reasonable take. I'm not even going to be mad at that. That's okay. I believe in that. And that's okay. I'm just going to say that peppermint soap is great. Makes you feel like a candy cane. It's real nice and sexy. It's awesome. But I'm excited for our show this week. Uh, I think we have a fantastic guest. Um, there is a conversation that's been happening. Of course, you know, we have been a, a, a big proponent of speaking truth to power, making sure that we're giving folks a space to be able to dig into the work that they do um, and also trying to figure out good ways to uh, minimize the effect of online harassment. We were one of the first shows to speak out about again, <laughs> speak out against that uh, when that terrible campaign happened a couple of years ago. Um, and we continue to do that work here on the show. But what we want to do is always want to bring on folks who are on the, on the ground doing the work, uh, folks who have kind of already been in that space and, and, and making, uh, so many different, uh, helpful decisions in the process of making our spaces and our gaming industry and all the spaces that we wind up in better. So that being said, I am super excited to bring on this week, Jay, who is the hotline director for the games and online harassment outreach hotline. I am so excited to have you on the Shay, on the Shay, on the show and the Shay, because that's what we're going to call it today. We're going to call it the Shay and the show. (laughs) The Uh, Shay, here we are. (laughs) Jay, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, I don't know, of course, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. So I, I, I was telling you earlier that I just, I love shows where I just get to gush. Um, And I guess I feel like I have permission to be a little extra indulgement because it's our birthday yes um we we just turned one actually yesterday uh august uh, 3rd 2020 is the first day we opened our lines and so you know birthday months uh yeah. it's a good it's a good time to really lean into ourselves <laughs> i love it and and first of all happy birthday to you and the team um Thanks. it is a, it is a it, it is not easy to get something like this off the ground it is very difficult to be able to amass the folks who are going to be able to partake in it, to figure out good language for it, to figure out the infrastructure to make a thing like this happen. Um, give the folks at home a little information who may not know exactly what the hotline is and, and how everything kind of started. Yeah, definitely. So uh, if you haven't heard of the Games and Online Harassment Hotline, um, we are a free, confidential, text message-based emotional support hotline uh, for anyone who makes or play, plays games. So I think that's something first that is like really special about us is that we really exist like by and for the games community and the games industry. Um, what that really means, like why someone would reach out to the games hotline rather than, you know, maybe a more conventional text message based hotline is that with us, we have that kind of cultural competency and understanding and background of 
what online harassment looks like in game spaces, what um, toxicity looks like, what um, issues are going on in the industry and in the news. And just those are just things that you won't have to explain uh, yeah. when you're talking about your experience, right? So we're, we'll never kind of dismiss uh, what you're going through is like, oh, well, that's that's not in real life, right? That's just online. Or why don't we just log off or play a different game? Um, a lot of the things that folks hear when they try to talk about their experiences outside of games spaces, because it can, I don't know, without that understanding, it can feel a little bit distant than um, what folks who might not be familiar with the spaces uh, like can can imagine or think of. So we really are a community driven um, organization that is created and founded and led by people who have been directly impacted by um, online harassment and abuse in the games community and just have such a deep knowledge and um, ex like history of experience kind of navigating that landscape. So we really wanted to um, create a space where folks could come um, and feel safe, anonymous, if you want to be. Uh, you only share what you want to share uh, and and just be heard and be listened to and feel like you're not alone, that someone cares about what you're going through and be connected to resources or other communities if that feels appropriate or if that's something that you're looking for. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those resources and avenues for folks to kind of come to again, trying to find places that are safe for them and trying to find places that will kind of go past the usual, oh, so what does that mean? Like, what is, sw oh, what is swatting? Yeah. Or like, you uh -huh. know, there's a, there's a, there's, a le there's less of a, there's more of a shortcut to getting to the problem because all the folks on right. the team understand the space in a bigger way. Um, right. when, when kind of formulating the, the hotline, just even from a nuts and bolts perspective, like what does it take to do something like this? Is it like, what's the resources look like to make a thing like this actually happen? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it was like accessibility is a really important piece of this, right? Mm. So we knew when we started, we wanted this to be a free resource. Of course, we wanted it to, um, to really be intentional and in the like lens that we approach this work. And, um, that it, it's something that folks, you know, on, on the service providing side um, wouldn't be doing alone, mm -hmm. right? Because there can be a lot of trauma, there can be a lot of violence or intense stories that people are telling. Um, and handling that kind of as islands just isn't really the solution. So those were kind of things that we we really kept in the front of our minds when we were starting this up. So um, what we ended up doing is we partnered with um, an existing organization that had a long history of doing really phenomenal uh, crisis intervention work in the like suicide prevention space. Mm. Um, we felt like their values were really aligned with ours. Oh, we really were really impressed by just like how much they took care of their people and each other. Um, and so we partnered with them to bring the games hotline in as, you know, a part of their center. And so what the way we got, uh, you know, agents and stuff to, to answer the, the text messages and um, conversations is we took uh, folks who already had that um, extensive like mental health crisis intervention, suicide prevention background, knew how to do counseling, um, knew how to talk to people about mental health. Um, and then for folks interested in our games hotline process project, we, we brought them over and trained them up in things like online harassment response, like some basic digital security knowledge. Mm. Um, we really grounded it in the history of like Gamergate and um, harassment as it shows up in games. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like really padded out some of that like cultural context um, so that with, you know, all of those powers combined, um, we have agents who are incredibly trained, incredibly supported um, and not, not doing this alone and also really intentional in, in the way that we're approaching 
uh, these conversations. That doesn't mean that we've we've been perfect all along or that we are even perfect now. This really has been an experience of like constantly learning and growing and responding to what the community is actually reaching out about and, and needing from us. I mean, so, yeah, it's been a journey. That's fantastic. I mean, I, 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 we've heard so many stories over the years of, you know, or, uh, you know, companies like uh, Facebook or YouTube having their trust and safety officers or trust and safety uh, respondents not really being taken care of in that way where they're seeing all this traumatic stuff over and over and over again and how that will eat at you. Um, and, and one, you know, be terrible for your mental health, but also just not give you a space to kind of like disconnect in that way because we're constantly online and we're, we're being triggered by lots of different things all the time. Um, right. I, I love the fact you you talked about just not being an island and everyone kind of working together to figure out good ways to, to do the work in that way. How are you all kind of helping each other get through all this glut of of information that is not great stuff to dig through on a fairly consistent basis. Are you all, you know, what's the mental health kind of, um, you know, safety net for all of you uh, within the hotline too? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I think when you think of, um, you know, providing emotional support for um, a conversation or, or a story that's really traumatic or listening to folks tell you about all the ways they're being like abused and all the toxicity they're facing day in and day out. Um, if you think of just doing that alone, that feels so like dreary and bleak and overwhelming, mm -hmm. right? Um, but what we found is that when when we remember that we're we're not alone and that we're part of a team and when we really show up for each other as peers we always have supervisors on we have like trained clinicians available for everyone to help with texts and also to kind of decompress and debrief after um hard especially after harder conversations um we also have you know like we have that training that folks can lean on we have a lot of tools and resources that we provide to agents so it's not like um so so we're definitely not uh, each of us just kind of going out on our own and navigating these turbulent waters and and um, facing that with no support, when we have these tools, when we have each other to lean on, when we have um, folks that we always know we can call and they'll help us, right? Our supervisors. Um, that's that's when it makes this work so much easier. And I think this is true for us on the hotline. And I actually think that's actually that's true for us in community as well. Mm. I think a lot of this is what we what we are missing. Um, in, in these community spaces, uh, something that shouldn't have surprised me as much as it did, but um, just wasn't, I don't know, just really changed the way that I was thinking about online harassment broadly, is that um, a lot of ha harassment does happen from, from strangers. You know, you mm. might see like people just talking trash to you or people you don't know who you're like matching with in lobbies, um, but, Actually, a lot of that experience of harassment comes down to that relational element too. Mm. You know, sometimes the people who treat you worse are worst are also the people who are closest to you. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I feel you like know? this chair was able to lay back and to get into like therapy <laughs> position. We could have so many conversations about that alone. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but I, yeah. lo I love that that's a, a part of that conversation too, where I think you know, people gaslight each other all the time and, and some people know they're doing it. Some people know don't know that they're doing it. Sometimes it is, you know, they're not paying attention and not thoughtful enough to be able to, to have that kind of self-awareness to, to mm -hmm. do that part. Um, yeah. Or it's yeah. what they've seen other people do. It's what like I'm, I'm watching these people treat each other this way. So I think that's maybe just the okay way to treat other people. Mm -hmm. Or even if it's not something actively that you're doing, um, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Um, that is not the hotline. Also, no one is calling you now for. That's advice. not the hotline. No. Um, sometimes, even if it's sometimes even if it's someone like you, you're playing games with a friend, and maybe this other like random person is harassing you, and that's annoying. But maybe you you deal with it. Whatever. What might hurt more is that your friend didn't speak up for you or mm. didn't say anything, um, and that that hurts a lot. 
too, you know, yeah. and it's, yeah, it, it, it is a lot of the conversations we have on the hotline are about that relational element of harassment and how it really just all blends together in this ecosystem. Yeah. Toxicity is kind of everywhere, but it really like I think one of the things that folks miss the most when they're feeling incredibly isolated because of harassment is that sense of connection and safety among people they can trust. Yeah. That's that's so that's so interesting because I think we don't think of it in terms of those ways a lot of times. I know I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, I, I, I'm in that space where for for most of the times when I'm having conversations around things like that, it's about how are you trying to kind of relate to the conversation at hand? Are you really trying? Are you really paying attention to it? Are you really thinking about like what's the things that's being said or you know impact versus um, you know, you know, uh, intent versus how things kind of work in that space. I think it's really interesting that that's a part of that conversation that you're seeing on the hotline, but I'm curious about, you know, jumping off that what's, what's the kind of gamut of stuff that you're seeing currently? Cause I feel like that is a, I am sure, especially because it's text-based that you just get a bunch of wild stuff all the time. <laughs> I'm curious to, to hear, like, what's the kind of gamut of stuff that you're kind of seeing uh, on the hotline currently? Yeah, um, one of our one of like a piece that we were really nervous about when we launched the hotline is that we have a very literal name, right? The Games and Online Harassment Hotline. Yeah. And we were afraid that folks would take that and think that you have to if you like text into us, you have to be talking about something that like happened in a game or you have to be talking about online harassment specifically. And if you're not going through either or both of those things, like we don't have space mm. for you. Um, when in reality, the messaging that we really wanted to get across is that we're a mental health resource for gamers and people who make games. Mm. Um, so that we, we tried really hard in our messaging um, to really emphasize that like, this isn't, there's like no gatekeeping here. We want to help you and we want to be here for you no matter what you're going through. Um, and we have that background in games and online harassment. That's kind of what makes us stand out. Yeah. Um, and so what has been really, really kind of validating um, in the texts that have come in is that we really, you're right, we have seen like, folks texting in about from from all backgrounds from all parts of the games community and the games industry over a huge like wide swath of issues right um i would say under everything this last year launching in 2020 <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> it's just a lot that's been happening um and so just mental health stuff there's a lot of folks who just text in wanting support and hope around mental health struggles. Yeah. Um, we do get a lot of in-game harassment um, text messages. And that again is is tied into that thing I just talked about how it, it is in-game harassment, but a lot of times it's also talking about your friendships and your relationships and, and, that, and the communities that you're in, um, stuff like that. Uh, we hear from the developer side too. We um, really? developer That's and like games industry side. Huh. Yeah. Um, Burnout, one of our top topics on the on the hotline for sure. Like huh. a lot of folks text in feeling really feeling a lot of despair or desperation or hopelessness around how hostile their workplace environment might be. Um, sometimes like a lot of times it is around like different axes of marginalization, you know, marginalized folks getting their work co-opted mm. or um, dealing with abuse or harassment, being tokenized stuff like that and then just general crunch stuff yeah. and like really stressful kind of expectations um we also do get um that kind of online harassment side so folks uh these are maybe some of our more elevated like or heightened kind of emotion chats where folks are like actively facing threats and harassment from folks uh, we get both people who are being harassed themselves as well as kind of like bystanders, like friends mm. of someone who's being harassed of like, I'm watching my friend go th through this thing and it's so awful and it's just eating her up and I don't know what to do. I want to support her, but what, what do we do? It feels like so overwhelming. And so yeah. we, we take a lot of those bystander chats 
as well. Um, and then, yeah, the, the community staff, community conflicts, community fallouts, relationship, friend groups. Um, these are, these are, I think the social part is such a big thing that draws people to games. And so it just makes sense that that is going to be a part of that gaming experience, right? Of like, what is it, what is it like to be in community and relationship with together, right? Sometimes <laughs> it's messy. <laughs> um, and So many and, times it's messy. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of folks are needing support around that. Um, so yeah, that's, 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 I would say the big buckets yeah. of what we see. That's fascinating. And the question I have, you know, bouncing off of that, which I think is is really in, is really interesting and and profound, is that I wonder what that looks like when you start to track things, like you know, like mm. we, we, you know, you started basically during the pandemic, which yeah. I'm sure there were lots of calls about over the past couple of years, and um, you know, bleeding into you know the 2020 2021, you've had uh aapi uh mm -hmm. you know hate elevating black lives matter conversations and police brutality mm -hmm. conversations happening yes. and, and bubbling up to the to the surface we're having all these conversations right now in the gaming industry about you know multi-corporation mm -hmm. issues that are happening in the space when the you election see, happened yeah like the <laughs> that yeah, was like, a big oh, night for us yeah oh i can just imagine that must have been mm -hmm. nuts but i think the the thing that, I, that i'm trying to poke at is when you see these very specific kinds of you know el you know elevated levels of conversation and yuckiness in the in the in the space do you have like the 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 not not the fixers but do you have the folks who come in who are specialized to say like well here's the thing around police brutality and i am a person mm -hmm. who knows a bunch of things around that mm -hmm. so let me take point on this one particular text exchange that's happening is there a thing like that that happens in in the hotline too, or is it folks kind of have a, a playbook that you all share from to kind of get through certain situations? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, so again, like all of our all of our volunteers and agents like are are trained with like kind of a really pretty broad like mm. training around a lot of different types of like mental health like topics and interventions, and also a lot of different issues in the games industry. So um, what we kind of count on is be, if we are intentional enough in our training, we touch on the roots of these issues mm. already, like from the start, right? So we already have that foundation uh, because I mean, you I don't need to tell you this, I don't need to tell your <laughs> audience this, but this, this is all like, this is news to some people. Right. <laughs> But it's it is this it's mostly the same stories, right? Like Black Lives Matter, it it's not n new. It's it's something that has roots going back so so long, right? And we we know that that's that's there. And the way that it fruits maybe looks different from year to year. Same with this Activision Blizzard stuff happening right now. Like, sure, this is kind of the flavor of 2021, but 2020, it was Ubisoft and live streaming. 2019, it was, you know, Riot and like other broader like game development, game industry stuff. Like it's, it is a new cycle that we can't predict, but we do um, already really intentionally look at some of the root causes of that, right? Mm. So, um, so what we, we, what we aim to do is like train and have that foundational knowledge and base to tap into. And then when something like the Activision Blizzard lawsuit drops, like this <laughs> just, just two weeks ago, um, we like kind of put together a, a quick like debrief of like, hey, this is what happened. This is kind of the top mm. like line headlines of like what's going on. Here's what you can probably expect folks to be like texting in about based on like just what folks tend to need support around when these things happen. And here are some resources relevant to it that we're going to like pull out from our database that might be like used a little more recently. Yeah. Um, but we really rely on them to like lean on those like kind of foundational counseling skills. Um, but of course, with that kind of new context of this is how it looks like now um, ma and making sure that no one has to explain 
like the context of what's going on when yeah. they're talking about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would figure that would slow you down as a, as a as an agent too. Yeah. Or just trying to you're like, mm-hmm. oh, well, I don't know, I'm not informed enough to wait. What? Yeah. What's Blizzard? Yeah, like, what, what happened? happened Blizzard? Like, what happened this <laughs> week? I mean, and also that's yeah. a weird part, right? Where like the all the the things that are happening within the industry are happening so fast, mm-hmm. and the industry in the the internet is moving infinitely faster than it used to. I, I, that that makes yeah. me think of like, you know, this is a year in. You know, the, this is the birthday month. Uh, mm-hmm. What are the things that you have found that surprised you over this past year? Because again, this is a thing that's yeah. really not been done before in this way. Uh, so I'm right. sure you found some some really interesting tidbits of things that you were just like, I didn't think about that, and then it kind of pops yeah. up. <laughs> oh, oh, I have I have quite a few. Um, actually, before I dive into that, I, sure. I did want to say one last thing about the Blizzard thing. Um, when when the Blizzard news dropped, our call volume or text volume, I kind of conflate the two sometimes, mm-hmm. our, our like traffic and, and folks texting in, uh, that tripled. Huh. We uh, had to get, we got volunteers to take extra shifts, like double up um, so that we made sure we could like get to everyone. Um, it What it is, this is a really like, um, intense and um not unique again because this isn't new news but it is a it is a really particular time um and i i don't know on one hand of course i'm not like happy that the industry is this way um, but i am so grateful that this time around we can be there for folks yeah you know um it it is the first time that this has dropped while the hotline was open um because Mm. In 2020, it kind of happened in like May and June, and we didn't open until August. And so it, it, it did feel like this year, it was it was like building up. Yeah. Um, we were <laughs> training up, skilling up, like leveling up that experience and, and building all those tools. And I just, I've been feeling, I've been practicing a lot of gratitude lately because things have been <laughs> tense, um, but I've just been practicing so much gratitude around like, I'm so glad we really rose to this occasion mm. that we could be there for so many people. Um, I don't know, that in itself was really validating too, that I feel like we we really rose rose to it, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, along those lines, right? We did, we did have to come all this way to get here. Um, there are definitely like a lot of things that we didn't initially anticipate and came up and we just had to deal with one. I mean, one example we kind of already talked about was the, the relational aspect of it. Mm. Of like, we should shift the way that we're talking about online harassment as not just like a technical problem, um, but really like a social problem. And, mm. and what are some of the like social solutions that we should like explore with folks? You know, like really checking in on folks like support networks and finding like, hey, who in your life um, do you think you could talk to about this? You know, or like, would it like, what are some like communities you might want to plug into? Um, so, so things like that, right? Not just like focusing on like the technical solutions of things, because often that's that's not what's what people are looking for. Yeah. Um, another thing that really surprised us uh, that we definitely had to take a moment to like wait was when you know you start a you start a harassment hotline we're survivor centered we know folks are getting harassed all the time people are facing abuse we want to give them space right yeah. uh, but then we started getting um texts from folks who maybe just raged at someone in a game or huh. someone who has been kicked out of a community after sexually harassing a woman in that space um, or someone who has been accused of of harm, like in the industry. Mm. Uh, we started getting these texts, and at first, we were like, "What's going on?" <laughs> um, and uh, I, there was definitely a moment where we made a really intentional decision to say, "These people are reaching out for help. They're a part of the games community. We recognize that harassment and abuse is a cultural problem, not an individual problem, mm. right?" Um, and so, especially when they reach out for help, especially when they are sharing these vulnerable stories with us, because it's not always easy to to say, I made a mistake yeah. and I really regret this, or I feel so ashamed. I feel like that that wasn't me and I feel so confused and frustrated. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I also feel a lot of pain 
You know, I feel like I've, I've been exiled and I'm really suffering. Um, and so, so yeah, so we were like, okay, so if we want to support these people, what does that look like to do that and still be survivor centered? Right. Mm. Um, because it's not like we're just going to hand out unconditional support uh, <laughs> to everyone of like, oh, you abused a bunch of women and you got kicked out. That sucks. You deserve a job in the games industry. You're, right. you're great. Here's an affirmation, right? Like we didn't, that didn't feel survivor centered to us. Oh. Um, and so what we decided to do was add another part to our training um, and skill all of our agents up around how to hold supportive and accountable conversations, Ooh, right? I love um, that. Yeah, looking at really, really rooting ourselves in the belief that one, we're all worth, we're all more than the worst thing we've ever done, mm. right? We're not defined by our biggest mistakes, um, and two, that um, if people that people can change, and it would matter if they did, because mm. I think when people start feeling like there's no hope and there's like, even if I change, no one would care anyways, right? I think that's when that kind of downward spiral really kicks into gear. Um, and then finally, that um, for people to change, they have to feel supported. Mm. That's that's just the reality of it, right? That's, they, they, they need someone to hold that door open for change. And we think that we can offer we can fill that role and offer that opportunity. We can't fix anyone, right? especially not in one hotline conversation. We're not going to transform someone into like, oh, you're magically a better person now. Um, but especially when they're reaching out for, for help, when they're telling us about their pain, we can, we can like validate that what they're going through is real. And we can see how we can see how they're struggling, you know, and we can uh. see that it seems like it really matters to you to do better. And I think that's really wonderful, you know, to have someone believe you, believe in you and really listen to your pain without dismissing it, um, I think can be really powerful in that way. Um, and since we are that kind of anonymous confidential space, yeah. um, I think folks feel a little safer talking about it with us. Um, and we're actually also one of the like kind of survivor centered things we do is like we're we try to as much as we can direct any further help seeking and support seeking that um, we, we believe they deserve away from survivors and directly impacted folks. Oh. Right. So who else in your life could you talk to about this? Yeah. Is there someone else in your life that you could process this with? Right. Um, and try to kind of redirect that away from like, but I, but they just won't listen. Like I've tried to message them and apologize and right. they, they blocked me. And so we're like, okay, that, it sounds like that was really, really hard when you felt like they blocked you and weren't listening to you. Is there anyone else you could talk to? Yeah, right. you know? <laughs> so, so little things like that, where we, we are still keeping that kind of compassion forward tone with folks. We are really like validating that what they're going through is real and that their pain is real. Um, and that we we don't endorse the things that they're saying directly and we we hold we just we just have to hold that door open for change yeah. um, and we know we're just one stop along the way of their journey um we never really we don't keep like cases on folks and we don't yeah. collect any like personal information so whoever comes through we never really know where their journey goes but we're hoping that this one stop helps folks kind of reorient to to a healthier path um and honestly i think it's such a great opportunity because we see these harassment and toxicity cycles happen of like you see it and you learn it and then you do it and then you experience it and someone mm -hmm. does it to you and then you see it and then you do it and when someone comes into the hotline and says I'm so angry, like, and, but I just use these like racial slurs and I feel really ashamed about that now. Like, whoa, okay, that's a lot. But we're, we're so, I'm, I'm just so grateful they brought that here yeah. instead of into another game, you know? Yeah. Cause we, we're here to hold that for you. We're also a team of folks who are trained and ready and have tools and want to support like everyone who texts in. 
um, and we're we're not trying to play play games with you, you know. No, um, I, but so, I, yeah, but I, but like seriously, that just hit me in the heart because I think that that is a, and I just I just put it in our in our chat in during the show when you were talking about you know holding people accountable but not throwing them away. And I, mm. and I was like, that's beautiful. I was like, that's not a thing that you hear a lot of people talk about in the conversations about accountability culture and, and saving space for people in what we wind up doing. And so I'm so happy you said that because it's been a thing that I've been struggling with as a person who is seeing the space in front of me for a while now. And it sucks because we have people in the space who are the folks who should be doing that work to say, yeah, I can't fuck with you. Like, you're not you're not a person that I want to rock with. And you're not we're not going to be friends. We're not going to go game together. We're not going to do that stuff. But there isn't a space to mess up. And it feels like not having a space to mess up throws people off a cliff and then you can't get them back. And there's no mm. re there's like no one who's trying to throw life preservers out uh, to kind of get people yeah. back into any space where they can learn from what they've done in a real way, try to figure out how to, you know, have some recompense with potentially people or with themselves and feel like you're not the worst person in the world. I've had so many conversations over the past mm. year where people have gone through various different things and have felt like this space has said that I have no worth anymore. And yeah having a place like the hotline who will hold people's feet to the fire, but in a way that gives them some arc for redemption in some form or fashion, you know, self self-imposed redemption um, mm -hmm. is so important. And that's good work. Like that is, that is really brilliant and, and worthy work. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that that's a part of the, the ecosystem for where, the way you're thinking about doing this. Um, cause that yeah. to me is extremely important and no one talks about that. Yeah, definitely. I, I think if, if throwing people away or locking them up or shipping them to an Island worked, if that ended violence, if that ended harassment and abuse, I, I might be for it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, but the reality is it, it doesn't, yeah. it just moves the harm around, you know, folks just go to different environments and and do it do it there and they might get kicked out there too mm -hmm. and then they just go somewhere else um but without that without that opportunity and recognition of dignity and also acknowledgement of that environment right that we've been talking yeah. about if this is a cultural problem no one experiences no one's first experience with violence is committing it mm. right we all witness experience are, like see violence before we ever do something to hurt another person, right? Um, and so it's it's all connected, and and we're all responsible to each other. I think this kind of this is a nice like full circle thing of like going back to that relational part mm. of this is about how we treat each other. Mm -hmm. These people who are harassing folks, who are abusing folks, who are sexually assaulting folks, they're not these like mysterious evil demons that are just like magically coming in and like getting people, Yeah, you know, there are friends, there are, there are family. Mm -hmm. They're like, they're the boss that we really look up to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's all of these people, you know, yeah. the, these people who aren't these like evil, again, they're not evil demons. They're just people. Yeah. Um, and, I think really recognizing how much we need each other is is really really key to yeah. to building a community that we want to see. Whew, that was that was. Can we just have you on the show all the time? Like, <laughs> I would love my to. <laughs> goodness, that is so good. <laughs> that just really did my my heart some 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 justice. Because again, like I, it has been a thing. Uh, now, now that I confess, now, now I'm, I'm trying to text you, but through the podcast, <laughs> but it's like the, those are things that have been really on my, my, my brain and my, and my mm. heart of just like, man, like I understand that there's a level of cynicism in the space and we've, we've built up these interesting layers of armor and walls around us where even the folks who are the most strident kind of folks that we have put into positions to, 
to actually be on the, the front lines and be be the folks who are building up organizations and helping mm-hmm. people who are supposed to be those folks. Some people even in those spaces are some of the most toxic folks in the space, right? Because uh, I because, wish you weren't right. <laughs> uh, yeah, and but. it's just those are things that like keep me up at night when people are like, "Hi, you're mm-hmm. ups- like, you are you mad about a thing?" I'm like, "Well, I want people to own their shit because I know that hurt people hurt people, mm-hmm. but I also know that there's a space there where if we're ever going to get out of any of this mess, which again is a huge battle yeah. to, to cross because again you're asking humans to not do human stuff mm-hmm. um we have to figure out ways to find good tools and good people who are able to look past the cynicism to get back at the crux of like you said all of us being in being in this together and also we have to figure out ways to give people the ability to mess it up in a way that doesn't feel like you only get one strike because it's moved the 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 the, the <laughs> The poll has moved in a lot of different ways where it's not even like you get three strikes anymore. You get mm-hmm. one and you're out of here, at least mm-hmm. in the court of public opinion, right? And I, yeah. I just wonder what that, you know, you, you're doing that work of not, not necessarily because of giving people the tools to kind of work through that, but also acknowledging that that is a thing, which I think is important. Yeah. No, like people don't want to acknowledge that that's a thing. Um, so yeah. I'm happy that you're doing that work. Definitely. Yeah, I would love to see... I mean, I feel like we see so many cycles, cycles of violence, cycles of harassment, Mm -hmm. uh, cycles of toxicity, right? I would love to instead see cycles of accountability and healing. Because like you said, Mm -hmm. humans do human stuff. We fuck up. Sorry, I don't know if we can cuss. We mess up. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I, I, I know for me, I've... I've hurt people that I really cared about. I have done things that I really regret. Um, I, and I don't think I'm defined. I know that I am so much more than those moments, you know? And so I want to extend that to, to everyone else as well. Um, I think I, I kind of got off trail, the cycles of accountability. Um, <laughs> what I would love to see is, um, instead cycles of wrecking, like harm happening. Mm. Cause I think that's just a part of being in relationships with other people and being connected. Um, a, a chance to recognize the harm and say and acknowledge it of like, I did this thing that was not okay. Mm. That was, and I can, I am hearing that it's hurt you in these ways and I'm so sorry, right? Not stopping there, of course, continuing on to figuring out how that harm happened. Like, why, why did I do that? What assumptions did I take into that? Or mm. what behaviors have I learned to, where I feel like that's an okay response, where that's a part of the way that I interact with people, you know, like how did that happen and how do I make sure it doesn't happen again? Mm. Um, and then making repair for mm. harm. So when I did this thing to you and it hurt you, it took something away from you. It took away maybe a sense of safety. Mm. It took away with, uh, a lot of like, maybe it caused trauma and um, now you need healing for that to, to repair that. Um, and how do I help you with that? What what can I offer? Um, how can we bridge this this gap, this rift that has happened between us yeah. and repair it, right? And what if those were the cycles that we see mm. instead of like fuck up, escalate, and like isolate, and then do it again over there? <laughs> you and then know? let's dogpile everything and yeah. let's get our crew from online to jump in and talk mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, like... <laughs> Again, I, these are all things that I that I truly, truly, truly rock with. I think that, that the yeah. the work you're all doing, and I know we I know we're running out of time. The mm-hmm. the work that you're all are doing, hearing that as a part of the ecosystem, makes mm-hmm. me even happier that you all are going strong and 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 and, and building on what you started. You know, when I first heard about the hotline, I was like, oh, well, this is like a crisis hotline and people call in and people do the work of saying something's wrong and and, and, and kind of working through it there. But hearing that folks are actually taking the time to do that layer of the work to me makes me feel like the the space will get better with with all of you kind of making that be a part of 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 this process. So. Jay, thank you so That's much for dream. being here. This is yeah. such, I am so this happy. This is a lovely conversation. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much for, for being here. 
Uh, give the folks at home, because we're going to play right at the break, uh, a little 45 second bumper uh, that you've all shared with us. But for the folks who are listening in the audio version, um, give the folks the ways that they can connect with you all at the hotline. Uh, what's the number to text so they can reach out if they are having some some things they want to get off their chest? Yeah, definitely. So uh, to reach the hotline itself, uh, you can text from anywhere in the U.S. Uh, you text the word support to 23368. So it's a short code. It's over SMS. Um, and you can text in at any time, any day of the week. We're online every day from 3 to 7 p.m. Pacific. So that's when we'll text you back. Or if you text us in during that time, we'll just text back right away. Um, and yeah, and so, yeah, seven days a week, text us anytime, we'll be here for you. Um, and then if you wanna follow us and um, the stuff that we do outside of the hotline, uh, we also put out like resources. We um, talk about different things that uh, we're, like a lot of these conversations that we we have within the hotline, like about Counterball stuff, like we put those out as resources as well mm. um, to the greater community. So if you want to follow uh, that type of thing, you can find us on social media at Games Hotline um, or on the web at www.gameshotline.org. That's, that's where you should go if you are having things on your mind, if you're worried, if you have any issues that have really been eating at you, please, please, please check out the hotline. Make sure you're using the resources that all these wonderful folks have put together so that you can have a great space for your mental health. I, I just appreciate you and the work that you're all doing so much. Um, and we would love to have you back on the show sometime soon. That would be fantastic. That would be so lovely, please, anytime. Awesome. Thank you so much, Khalif. Thank you so much, Bricago. We're gonna take a quick break, uh, but right after the break, we're gonna talk a little bit about some stuff that we've been playing. Uh, everybody here on Twitch land, we're going to do a quick break here. Everybody in podcast land, you'll hear a little bit about the wonderful folks from Fanbyte. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Thank you, Jay. You're awesome. This was so much fun. Oh my gosh. You're such a good host. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I try. I try. Um, thank you again. I'll, I'll bug Asa and the rest of the crew uh, behind the scenes to get you all the info that you need. Um, and yeah, you can disconnect from the call and we'll see you. I'll see you soon. Awesome. Thanks for making our birthday celebration so special. Um, this is like the first show of our like birthday tour. So this is really special. Thank you for starting it off so well. This re I feel so warm and fuzzy. Thank no, you so we, much. I do too. Again, that did me, that did my heart some good. So, uh, we'll be <laughs> awesome. working with you all in the okay. future. So we'll figure it yeah. out. Wonderful. Take care. Have a Take good care. night. Good. Have a good rest of your show. You too. Bye. Take care. Everybody, we're going to hit a quick break. We'll be right back after this. The Games and Online Harassment Hotline is a text message-based, anonymous, and confidential emotional support hotline. And it's created specifically for the gaming community. Because we're gamers and creators, and we want to help each other. So, how does it work? Well, you text us, and we listen. Our hotline is 100% anonymous. We can talk about anything you need to, and only what you want to. The Games and Online Harassment Hotline is an inclusive resource for anyone, no matter how you identify. If you feel that you need emotional support, you can start right now by texting SUPPORT to 23368 and our qualified responders will be there to listen to you, free of charge. Reach out, get help, and let's make this community a better place to work and play. Hey Bricago, Merrick Kay here from Fanbyte. Did you know that Spot On Me is a part of the Fanbyte Podcast Network? We produce a ton of other great shows like Channel F, a podcast where we talk about the games we're playing. Can I just say yeah. how much I would love for there to be a Hitman game that's just about making people experience embarrassing social faux pas, trying to like prank people and make it seem like they had farted or like tripped on something. <laughs> that would be like very good. Dig up weird finds at thrift stores. So the <laughs> listing says Bung Doctor V64. <laughs> and take your questions about the best jokers. Labars Martin asks, what's the best or coolest weapon ever given to a mech? Gundam Gusion Rebake has a really oh, good- wait, give, me, give me that one more time. Gundam Gusion Rebake. Yo, I heard you. <laughs> Gundam <laughs> Gusion. I personally guarantee that listening to Channel F will make you a better, smarter, more powerful version of yourself. So go to fanbyte.com slash podcasts or search for Channel F on your podcast app of choice today. Improvement not guaranteed. Listening to Channel F may cost you a 
Welcome back to the Spawn of Me podcast. I'm your host, Khalif Adams with the DOB. I hope you're all doing well. If you missed the first half of our show with Jay, who is the director of the Games Online Harassment Hotline, you missed one of probably one of the better shows that we've had this year. We had some bangers in 2021, but that was pretty damn fantastic. I can't even front. That was like food for the soul, mind, and body. Uh, in a way that I would just like, I am blown away by the work that they're doing over there. So please make sure you're giving them some love. Make sure you're please supporting them in any ways that they can, a ways that you can support them. Um, second half of the show, not a lot of news this week. Again, all the stuff that's happening is still happening. Uh, nothing really new is really dropped there that has much consequence until real repercussions happen. People are leaving uh, Activision Blizzard. Nothing's really happened yet that we didn't already expect to happen. So not really going to dig into that. But I do want to talk about some games that I've been playing this week. Uh, and we're going to do that in what we've been playing. So the first game that I've been playing is Halo Infinite. I got a chance to dig into the beta the technical tech test that they had. And let me say, wow, wow, wow. Shout out to magic cast all the way from Australia. What up, what up, what up? I halo is back. There is no doubt in my mind. Now all the conversations that happened before about is halo going to make it, is halo going to come back? It, you know, what's the things that we've seen that are not going to be great. You know, we saw, you know, the first initial, you know, piece of, 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 you know, visual gameplay or not even gameplay, but yeah, gameplay some months ago. And everyone was like, yo, Craig looks terrible. Uh, the game is doomed. No one is going to want to play a Halo Infinite when it drops. No one cares about this game. This tech test took all that stuff and threw it out the window. It took all of that energy and was like, shut your face. <laughs> it came in like the locks <laughs> talking about shut your face. I don't care what you're talking about right now. Halo is the best game on the planet. I played hours of this tech test. That is not a thing that I say about tech tests. We get a chance to play stuff all the time. We get a chance to play, you know, you know, I get a chance to play stuff early often you know tech tests betas there's going to be some stuff that i can't talk about that i'm going to be playing really soon that all of you are going to want to play very soon the ideas around if halo was actually going to be as dope as we thought it were going to be at least from the multiplayer perspective which is you know i got some shit online for 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 saying out loud that i you know i know that there's a multiplayer and a single player component it's not really what I come to Halo for. I come to Halo for the multiplayer parts of it. That's never going to change for me. And I understand that people are like, I want to play the single player and that's great because I want to see what happened to Cortana and Master Chief. That's fine. I'll run through that stuff after I've had a whole bunch of hours in on, on multiplayer. But this felt like something that was not just some like, well... We're trying to work on the kinks and, you know, trying to figure out if it works well and and, and, and if it's going to kind of do what we think it needs to do. This thing feels good. Like shooting feels good. Movement feels good. The stuff that they had in the academy looks and feels right for the ways you want to get people ramped up and onboarded back into a game that they haven't played for years. I am infinitely, pun intended, excited about what I'm going to be able to play when Halo Infinite drops. I'm going to be in this bad boy. Like I didn't think that Halo like Battlefield was going to be my 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 shooter of this year or in the next year and a half, 2 years. Like Battlefield is still going to be my game of choice for most stuff. But like I wasn't expecting to want to put in massive amounts of hours into Halo. Like I'm hot about Halo. And I love Halo. I think Halo is really good. This, this like evened out the conversation for me about like what games are going to be playing. It's going to be hard for me to figure out how I'm going to get enough games in enough time in to play both of these, but Halo infinite, 
has jumped up in a big way in terms of the uh uh my excitement for what a a a halo game is going to be in this way like i am really excited about this and every like every map that they put out it was so wild because like the conversation for the whole weekend if you were in the gaming conversation about anything on social media the only conversation was about halo and everybody who was talking about Halo was talking about how good it felt and how awesome it felt and how good they, the, the expectations had moved up for this title in this space for a game like this. Um, Caesar Towers in the chat says, would you say this is being set up to be the best Halo multiplayer? I don't know. But what I would say is that this has the most upside of a Halo title that I've seen in a long time. There are so many things that you'll be able to do with Forge being in it again. Um, the 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 variation and and feel of the different kinds of weapons, the 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 commando gun that feels like a, a, a kind of in between BR and AR. Like every gun just feels good and sounds good, and and the little flavor things that they do within within all those little small spaces just feels amazing. Like I, 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 I am just really, ex- excuse me, really excited about, I had to swallow a burp. Uh, I'm just really excited about what they are kind of giving to the fans in a way that feels like they're paying homage to, 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 to the, to the older games in a real way. You, you'll get to get your Spartan vibes in but the way that they've done the, the the maps in this game, like they've really paid attention to good map design to, you know, even like I would have never thought that like playing against bots would have been fun, but they ramped up that bot difficulty over the weekend and kids was getting rocked and it was great. It was so good. It was so cool to see people be like, yo, I thought that bot was a human. And, and like actually have to struggle against bots, but not in a way that was like Call of Duty bots where Call of Duty bots felt like they magically just understood exactly where you were going to be. Every shot was a headshot. They moved and just had crazy amounts of, 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 of armor and, and just felt like you were, you were playing superhumans. This felt like bots being bots, but also in a way that made them competitive in a way that where you could actually play against the bots in a Halo game if they keep everything the way they are and actually get better. Like, I think that's the thing that doesn't happen often when you play games like this. Like there is, there's either the, 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 the learning curve is more about how many reps you get into the game. And sure, there'll be a little bit of that in this, but I think the things that you understand from a, you know, how many shots is it going to take to, to whittle down your, your, your armor so that I see it pop. So that I know to hit you with a headshot. Like you'll be able to do that with different weapons in here. That feels like you'll be able to understand and learn the maps. Well, learn routes. Well, while also getting your sensitivities kind of tuned in and, and all those kinds of things in a real way. I am so impressed with what they did with this tech test. Uh, three, four, three did. I am really impressed with this. Like I, I was like trying to find ways to not do shit to go play this. And it's a tech test. That is a thing that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen often. I was, I was, man, I was so hyped to play this and it, and it, and it came through, like it came through in a really, really, really good way. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just like, wow impressed at what this is, is, is going to potentially be for what this game is. And again, the thing that's going to be really cool is like Halo has had an esports layer to it. This feels like the Halo where esports is really going to be a thing that will be exciting to watch again, because you kind of have been in the esports space for, for you've been out of the esports space for so long that esports is kind of, evolved around you and past you this halo feels like it's going to bring that back in a real way where people are going to be like i'm going to go watch esl halo matches again like 
if if 343 and Microsoft really want to blow this thing out and make it something like imagine Halo Twitch Rivals. If they have Halo Twitch Rivals, Twitch, Twitch, somebody clip this. Twitch, if you have Halo uh Twitch Rivals, which I know you will, you need to put me in this joint. That's all I'm going to say. I was on the Olympics. You got to put me in it. <laughs> I'm going pro Caesar. Caesar, Caesar Tower was in the chat. So like, you're going to go pro Kai? Yo, I'm going pro. I'm calling it right now on the show. Pro Kai playing Halo, sniper shotties all day, every day. I'm going to sound like Nick Merckx. Yo, buddy, this is what I do. That also sounded like uh, somebody else. But all that to say, I am very, very excited for this game. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I was very, very hyped about this. I got my boy Washburn in the chat. It's going to be me, Washy. It's going to be Snowbike Mike. It's going to be Andy Cortez. It's going to be David Ellis from 343. He can't go pro because he made the game, but I'm going to go pro with those cats so I can talk like Nick Merckx and put my head in the screen. We can only see my eyebrows. And then that's what's going to happen when I go pro and I'm just going to be rich. It's going to be wild. I'm calling it right now. Clip that. Send it to me on Twitter because it's true. This is what's going to happen. I'm saying it now. Anywho, um, extremely impressed with what Halo Infinite is showing right now. Um, I was sad to see that flight go. I'm excited to see what they're going to do for the next layer of it. Um, we didn't really get a chance to play around with. Um, uh, yes, I want you to do that, Knights. Um, we're not gonna we haven't seen anything in terms of uh vehicles yet in terms of the gameplay that they showed um they did finally kind of let people play against each other which was actually really fun i missed that one part of the the flight uh because i was busy doing other stuff um so sadly i didn't get a chance to try out pvp vote um but again each map felt really good the the bot ramp up in terms of difficulty felt really good the gadgets felt really good the grappling uh hook which I thought was going to be a kind of corny gimmick is actually really useful um, in the way that it works. The two gripes that I have um, is that, uh, well, the, the biggest one gripe that I have is the, is the actual one is like the gadgets that you wind up getting, they take like a half a second too long to pop. So like the wall that you get, that's a, that's a, um, a wall, a shield wall feels like it takes like a half a second, a little bit too long. To, 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 to proc and to, and, to, and to show up. Overshield feels like that a little bit. Um, but everything else felt like classic Halo in the best ways. Now we'll see what happens once more people get into the flights, once they open it up into big team battles and, and stuff around vehicles, which is gonna be a really interesting way to see where they tune all that stuff. And then you know, they, the, even the stuff that they're doing with the battle pass just feels smart. Like it doesn't feel cheap. doesn't feel like they're going to rob you of a whole bunch of your money. feels like, you know, all those things are going to be really interesting. And I love the fact that the customization parts are just going to be so uh, broken down into all these kind of elements of your armor that people will really look just will really look different, which I think is going to be cool. You'll be able to see the people who grinded their battle pass in a real way and the conversation that they, show, they talked about, about you being able to kind of keep your battle passes and work through multiple versions of it so you can get what you want. That's that they sold me so hard on this game. Nick Merckx, yeah, eyebrows in the camera. That's all you see. That's going to be me up in this game. Wow. My God. Halo, just my God. So good. The other game that I have been playing that has taken up a ridiculous amount of my time has been death's door. Death's door is definitely in my game of the year list. We're going to be doing the spawnies later in the year. Uh, I hope that you all come to it. We're doing it very different this year. I'm going to have a co-host for the spawnies this year. Um, so I'm excited for that. Death's door will be in there. This is the year of the isometric game. The Ascent is going to be in there. Death's Door is going to be in there. 
it is the year of the isometric game and death's door just does so many things right it nails all the small things it nails combat it nails story it nails um vibe it nails music in such a fantastic and gorgeous way i'm literally on the last boss um and everything just feels good like it feels solid you know this is a game that came out of nowhere from acid nerve uh we literally just had our second episode of spawn plays uh that i recorded today with the team from acid nerve so expect that on monday uh of next week uh so we'll be having uh one of the designers and composers on the, on the show uh to 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 talk to me while i play through the game um which which is fun so please make sure you're checking out spawn plays on our youtube channel um but like i never thought that this little bird was going to be the joint i didn't think this one crow was going to be the game that i can't stop thinking about when there are so many other games out in the world i went back into the avengers game and that's because of freaking greg miller god damn it greg miller getting me hyped for black panther freaking yusef mcguid getting me excited for freaking Black Panther in the damn game. Freaking Blessing Adioye Jr. getting me freaking excited for the goddamn Black Panther in the goddamn Marvel uh, Avengers game. Mad at y'all, but I had fun. And that's the reason why I'm mad. Because <laughs> it was fun. It was fun going back into that game. But again, Death's Door is like whimsical and smart and funny and challenging and like the fact that this game is not that expensive and i think is is, is it on game pass is that store on game pass or game pass is it on game pass i think it's on game pass no it won't be no okay it won't be on game pass at launch okay it's not but it's twenty dollars it's a twenty dollar game that is bringing, like giving me ridiculous amounts of joy. I, and, and it feels like the thing that's great about it is the fact that like none of the boss battles feel cheap. There's a couple of things that I, like, there's a couple of small things where I'm like, man, I wish you would have put a, a checkpoint here. Cause why do I got to do this thing again? But the checkpoints are, are pretty fair. The, the, the mechanics that you wind up gaining throughout the rest of your, your run are super helpful. I love the fact that there are secrets in it. I love the fact that when you, I finished a level you feel like there are tools that you're using to get back to that place so that you can go explore more like what a fantastic we have so many dope games right now there are so many bangers out right now it is nuts that we have so many bangers out right now that you can dig through and play apex came come back with with, with seer which is fantastic and cheap <laughs> from what i keep hearing from people um so that game is nuts uh you know again marvel's avengers is ramping up back into the way we're gonna hopefully play some black panther uh and see how black panther runs um excited for halo we haven't even talked about the stuff that's dropping next month we haven't talked about the stuff that, that no the stuff that, wait let's see august video game releases because there's going to be some stuff that drops this year that drops this month that's going to be pretty wild too. Let me look real fast. Godfall is going to get another update, which I'm actually excited about. Cause I, I actually still like, um, Godfall. Hades is finally coming to console. I have thoughts about that, that I'll share after something is happening. Cause I've been playing it, but I can't talk about it. I'm under embargo. Um, 12 minutes is dropping dying to play that. Uh, Go Tsushima's director's cut is going to happen. Dying to play that and get back into that world with the expanded stuff that they're going to be doing there. Um, and a couple of other games are, are going to be in there. Madden's dropping too, so Madden's going to be uh, Madden's going to be coming out. And then September is just going to be wild in terms of game releases and stuff like that. If you have not played Death's Door, go buy Death's Door. That's all I'm going to say. You need to cop it. There's nothing else to tell you besides you need to cop it, but you need to cop it. There's no reason why you shouldn't. It is definitely one of the games that I have been thinking about the most. It is brilliant. It is super fun. It is really good. Um, make sure you go get in that thing. Um, we had a fantastic show this show. 
This is a fantastic, amazing episode. I'm so happy to have shared it with all of you here in Twitch land, everybody in podcast land. Uh, this will be going up on Friday of this week. I'm not behind. Hooray. Also, new season of Destiny, August 24th is my birthday. So make sure you go play Destiny uh, for, for Ka's birthday. Next month is Deathloop from the Dark Tiger. Yes, Deathloop is dropping. What? Come on. You ain't got stuff to play. You're bugging. There's so much dope stuff right now. We got so many good games to drop. And you can finally put an S. You can finally put an SSD in your in your PlayStation 5. Uh, also, if you looked at our B cam, this is the Elgato face cam. If you want to see what it looked like real quick. That's it right there. Uh, so that's what that is. Yeah, I'm going to get up out of here. This is, again, uh, a lot of fun. We have a lot of cool stuff that's coming. Uh, some surprises, uh, some partnerships, some things that have been in the works for a little bit are coming to fruition. We're getting some things done. Um, are you going to cop that new Sony? Which which Sony are you talking about, Puscoms? Let me know while I'm signing off. Um, but yeah, I, I, a lot of good stuff coming down the pipeline very, very soon that I'll be sharing across all the social media things. Please, please, please go check out the videos that we put on our YouTube we're almost at 5,000 um, subscribers, I think, over on YouTube. Um, let me see how many we are at right now, because that would be good for me to share with you all. Uh, we're at 4.26K uh, subscribers on our YouTube channel. I'm hoping that we can at least get to 5K before the end of the year. Oh, the Alpha ZVE10 camera. I have thought about it. Um, I don't need any more cameras. <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, so uh, another one of the announcements that's going to happen very soon is that I've been telling you all that, you know, my basement has two parts to it. This is the main studio and there's a secondary space where I want to have more of a kind of standard YouTube setup, like, you know, desk, nice light overhead, kind of off to the side deal. Um, Lord, Nav Lord Navarone, thank you so much for the subscription for the four months. Um, and want to build that up. And now I'm decided that we're actually going to do it and start to start to get some of that stuff together. Um, so expect there to be some additions to that room very soon. Um, that will be part of the partnerships that we'll be working with, uh, together. We also have been talking to some really great folks, uh, across the industry about doing some collaborative content. That's going to be a thing. I'm going to be teaching a course uh, in podcasting gear. Uh, if you've seen our friend Danny Pena doing his thing over on the Bright Live platform, I'm going to be doing a class as well that you'd be able to sign up for um, and and uh, reserve some tickets for. Uh, I'll basically go through some of the stuff that we have in here and also some of the gear that I use when I go on the road, when we were going on the road, because I think that's a thing that a lot of people don't have like an idea of how to record on the road. So I'll give you a couple of good tips on how you'll be able to do that in a class that's going to be coming up very soon on that end. So um, all those things are in that space. September, the Black and Gaming Awards is coming back. I'm producing that show. Um, so we have a lot of fun stuff coming down the pipe uh, for all of you here in Chicago. So, you know, the grind never stops, baby. We keep pushing and we keep making things happen. It's been an interesting and pretty wild 2021 we want to continue to have that momentum moving into 2022 as well and then the game awards are happening later in this year what is happening my god anyway massive love to you all at home i will see you all next week on the spawn on me podcast please 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 make sure you are taking care of yourselves make sure you are paying attention to all the things that you need to make sure that you are okay uh, again, the Delta variant is no joke. It is not a thing to mess around with. It is not something to play around with. Please make sure you are keeping yourselves safe out there. Much love to you all. Have a wonderful night. And until then, we say peace.